is the one and only Pastor Mark Barrows with Christ in Action. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Faithful. <laughs> Well, it's a thankful Thursday, and we're giving thanks to the one who made the day, and we're rejoicing in it. I know that you are so excited about the gospel of Jesus Christ, and before you, and because you are, Dennis Savelle, get ready, ready, ready for this powerful word from Pastor Mark Barrows with Christ in action. Take it away, Pastor. All right, indeed, delighted to be bringing to you the word of reconciliation today. God was in Christ, not laying our sins to our account but taking them unto himself and making him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Well, not only that, friend, but we become Christ in action, for Christ now is in us, and uh, he is at work in us and uh, accomplishing his purposes and plans in the earth. Well, that's why we preach him, as the Apostle Paul writes in Colossians chapter 1, that uh, it is Christ in you, me, every one of us, that is the hope of glory. Not just the hope of heaven one day, but the hope of the glorious purpose and design to which God called and made us when he created us in his own image and likeness. God desires to be a living, us to be a living expression of himself in every way and in all things. To that end, friend, it all starts with the heart. The heart is the heart of the matter. First Samuel 16 uh, and verse 7, God said to the prophet Samuel, he said, do not look at the outward appearance of those in Jesse's house who I'm sent, where I have sent you to anoint the next king. But God does not see as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks on the heart. And so I invite you to an understanding of that truth that since the heart matters to God, the heart must matter to us. So important for our world, I believe that there is a growth, a development, a maturation that happens within us when we become heart-focused, heart-centered. First and foremost, of course, looking at the heart of God, seeking to know the heart of God. And so how do I know the heart of God? Well, friend, God is more than just a malevolent being that you go to uh, like a sugar daddy or a slot machine to get whatever you want and the way you want it and how you want it. Albeit, the Bible does tell us in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 17, we are tr to trust in him as the living God who gives us all things richly to enjoy. But you know what? As we enjoy the things that he gives us, he wants us to understand and know his heart towards us, that he is gracious, he is merciful, that he is kind, that he is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, that uh, his great desire is to show himself strong on your and my behalf. In fact, we share this often. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 16 and verse 9 says, the eyes of the Lord are in constant search throughout the whole earth. What's he looking for? Those who heart are turned towards him, are perfect, upright, looking to him. For then what he does is he shows himself strong on our behalf. So, friend, as we get to know God beyond the benefits of what he does in our lives, we begin to see his heart. This is so important because the history that we have in Scripture of uh, those who are called the household of the children of Israel who were brought out of Egypt, they saw great miraculous wonders of God. Uh, but they didn't know his ways. They didn't, they didn't know him. Uh, every time something happened, although they saw his power and his arms stretch out and mighty miracles, every time something came up in life, they questioned him and said, we want to go back to where we, uh, we were. They were murmurers. They were complainers. Uh, and ultimately, their hearts became cons consumed with unbelief and doubt and evil. And uh, they perished in the wilderness. Well, so what do you want me to get out of all of that? Well, friend, our understanding and our begin to walk and to live a life from the heart begins with turning our hearts toward God and getting to know him. And in knowing him, we begin to understand how we are made and what we are made for, that we are made in the image and likeness of God. And therefore, we will begin to say with the psalmist, 
As for me, I shall only find satisfaction when I lay down and wake up in his likeness, not in the likeness of what Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or the television or the, uh, the people down the street say that I should be, but my satisfaction, your satisfaction, each of our satisfaction should come in laying down and waking up in the likeness of God, seeing his influence upon our hearts as we show forth his same love. The Bible says the fruit of God's spirit and influence upon us is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance. Friend, as we see these things manifest in our hearts, we know and we, we believe that uh, we are the children of our Father God and we express those things through, through his work in us in the whole earth. This has been an outreach of Connected Church. Connect with us, connected-church.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and of course, right here on this Gospel Explosions Outreach to the Tennessee Valley and beyond. Knowing this, together, together, we are the difference that makes the difference as we awaken to God's purpose of knowing him and his love for us and mobilize to his mission of making him known and sharing his love with others. That's good news on this thankful Thursday, faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Anyway, Pastor. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, great job as usual. Yes, ma'am. Hey, just keep on doing what you're doing, blowing the gospel up across the Tennessee Valley. And hey, we're just going to keep it going. And we just thank you for that powerful word that can help anybody throughout the day. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's why we share it. We're glad to do it. All right. Be blessed. All right. You too. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Well, hey, listen, y'all. Indeed. Indeed. May we look on the heart of our Father. Because as we know the heart of the one who made us, we can see how we are made and what we're made for. And so our hearts can be appropriately attention, uh, attentive and focused upon who we really are and what we're made to be. And in so doing, you know what will happen? We'll live lives toward our God as followers of his, as dear children. But not only that, we will relate to others with the same heart of our daddy, father, God, as we emulate and allow the fruit of his spirit and influence upon our hearts to manifest his love, his joy, his peace, his long suffering, his goodness, his gentleness, his faith his meekness, his temperance, as we become living expressions of him. Hey, how about we all follow his heart today? Well, this has been an outreach of Connected Church, and uh, we just want you to remember this always, that God loves himself some you, and we do too. You matter to God, and you matter to us. Hey, don't forget tonight, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, you can connect with us for our Midweek Connect Bible study. It's an interactive Bible study online that uh, you can connect with us. Go to at Connected Church on Facebook, YouTube, and uh, you'll see the connect. Uh, you can connect by Zoom and come right in live and participate and share. Uh, we have people do that from various locations, or you can just uh, join us on YouTube where you can also make observations and comments. Uh, and just participate and study along with us. Either way, we just love to stay connected with you. All right. Well, go ahead and have a thanks for Thursday. Do it on purpose. You're authorized. We'll talk to you again real soon. Bye-bye for now.